This is Aaron, and, and you, you are here protecting this vehicle, right? Exactly. Because communications is, is extremely important, but you need to stay tuned all the time. When there is no network, you need to create a network. And when exactly. you, and in this situation, a Sapphire is, is having a great solution for keeping up networks um, all the time, right? Absolutely. And why is that? So, uh, Sapphire. Uh, is a so-called HOPS, which stands for High Altitude Platform System. So it is capable of flying for uh, 64 days currently, and we are aiming for 200 days of endurance. The flight altitude is 20 kilometers, so it is the optimal solution, for example, areas struck by a natural catastrophe, let's say an earthquake, a typhoon, you name it. But all the infrastructure is lost, there, are, there is no connectivity available. We can fly a Zephyr above the area and provide direct-to-device connectivity for the rescue services, even the inhabitants if necessary. The mission it is on depends on the payload we have attached. And uh, currently we are providing three payload options. There's an optical play payload, a radar payload, as well as a uh, connectivity payload, obviously. So you can easily switch between the payloads very quickly, I guess, with yeah. rapid deployment? Once, once it's landed, yes, it is easy. Of to course, change. yes, yeah. I can yeah. imagine yeah. that. Yeah. All right, it, it looks, and it looks very high tech. Well, actually low tech, right? It's just a big wing. Exactly. But it's it's more than that, right? Yeah. It's, it has a lot of development going on. Exactly. The wingspan is 25 meters, yet only 75 kilos. So it's very lightweight, despite its size, and it's uh, 20 years of development we are seeing here. So it, it's been a uh, lot of trial and error, a lot of development to okay. achieve what we have here today. Okay. So actually it's a great asset for Airbus Networks, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Very multi-use. This is Stefan Alestra and we're talking about, as you can see here, a bird's eye view. Now, just in the interview with Olivier Coxon, we talked about all of those integrations into a critical communication system. This is satellite imagery, right? And how important is that? It's very important because, for example, in case of uh, public safety use cases or disaster monitoring, uh, flooding, uh, fire, you can use a satellite image or satellite image built by Airbus to visualize and to, to, to do some damage assessment, for example, uh, in case of fire, flooding, using the very good resolution. You can see very good resolution, 30 centimeter resolution. Perfect, yes. And, uh, and also uh, very good accuracy also. So we, is is example of Plan Neo. Plan Neo is a last generation uh, optical constellation and two satellites, uh, identical satellites with very good accuracy. And uh, each point of the planet can be uh, revisited every day. Okay, so. So, and that is directly in touch with the control room, right? I understand, and from the uh, control there? There is a ground station, so the image are delivered from the satellites to the ground station, and then at the ground station, they are shared to the different to users. different users. Different okay. users could be public safety, government, intelligence agency, defense. Okay. Uh, so could it directly be shared with the users in the field? Uh, is this, this is the, the idea, huh? to, to share uh, through, uh, for example, a tablet or uh, hand, a mobile phone, to share the image, uh, if somebody is connected to our platform, they can visualize uh, each day a new satellite image, yes. Fantastic. This is the idea. Yeah. Okay. Where this does it idea. stop, right? This is the idea, yes. Fun. And even after, the step after would be to use artificial intelligence, for example. If I, if I may show you, for example, this is the city of Helsinki. And you can see two different pictures, one from this date and one from the other date. And using artificial intelligence, we can detect what is new, what has changed. We can see the changes. The changes automatically uh, for the users is very important to, to, to detect automatically the change, for example. Example of application, you can imagine after a disaster, Yes. you can look immediately what is the change. This is very nice add-on to a complete ecosystem of critical communication networks. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Tetra is there to stay for another 10 years, definitely. We talk about 2030, uh, so that means that still development is going on on Tetra, right? Uh, yes. That's very important. Now, what kind of demonstration do we have here? So here we have the Tetra Base Station 4, uh, which means that actually we are actually not only uh, the Tetra, but also the LT Base Station, which is actually part of this setup. So you see the Tetra Base Band here, 
uh, in the left side of the box, and then the right side of the box you have the LTE. In the lower box, this is the radio unit of the Tetra, and the upper box is the uh, radio unit of the LTE. This is a 700 megahertz LTE network running parallel with the Tetra network. So the use case actually is that uh, we are breaching the communication between the first responders between the Tetra and the uh, LTE mobile broadband users. So it's improving the situation awareness and helping them in the uh, field to, to with the proper operation. Okay, so you Saving can do a demo lives. here. Sending yes, I have a your demo course. here. Uh, we have an application running on top, which is Agnet, and we can uh, collaborate the smartphone users. We can have a speech with the radio, uh, Tetra radios, and um, you see that uh, uh, the first responders can actually communicate with the mobile broadband users uh, using Tetra or smartphones. So, uh, what is the setup delay time? Uh, it's about uh, core setup time is about a couple of seconds, and um, if you want to do uh, LTE call, for, uh, mobile video call, for instance, then it's uh, a typical LTE, which is uh, four to five. So, seconds. is that mission critical or is that business critical? Uh, if you use the uh, push to talk, that is much faster, so okay. then it's immediate actually. So okay. we can see this uh, mission critical. Response, mission okay. critical. Thank you so much. I'm trying to find my way here through, uh, through the Airbus booth. It's so extremely busy um, that there's almost no space left. Okay, so satellite communications is, is the next step here. All right, okay, sorry. We're just breaking into this conversation here. Sujan Agiro is the name of this gentleman, and we're talking about satellite communications. Thank you so much, yeah. Naomi. Yeah. I'm keeping yeah. one Especially, up. Okay. we are providing the satellite communications for the critical communication solution which we're offering. Yes. Uh, and uh, the co communication solution which we're offering which require resilience yes. Yes. and uh, high-level connectivity, secure connectivity. Yes. For example, in case of uh, LTE, we do not have coverage in the remote areas. Yes. Or if you have, have coverage in the emergency situations, where if you need extra capacity, that's when the satellite communications come into the picture. These are the critical use cases. For example, that's when the satellite communications will help you cover the connectivity with secure network. And these are, for example, the first use. First use case is destruction in case of any destruction or congestion where you require more bandwidth and more connectivity. That's when you have the secure connectivity over communi uh, satellite communication. So does all everything switches automatically, or do you need to take a lot of action to, to really, make all those switches? It really depends on the customer use case. There are different possibilities. For example, if you have a use case or requirement where you you need to ha have the connectivity happen automatically. For yes. example, the switching has to happen automatically when there is no LTA coverage. Yes. You want to happen the uh, the connectivity or uh, switching or automatically to uh, satellite. Yes. That that's also possible. If you have a case where you need to switch manually to have the the, the control with with the command center control yes then that is also possible it really depends on the use case it really depends on the requirement so it's great to see you know the sapphire uh the the, the yeah. satellite imagery satellite right. communications right. you guys got it all right? yeah for example if you see there yeah what is have the antenna th this is this is dual par this is dual parabolic antenna this is manufactured by Intelian. Yes. Intelian is the company who is ma manufacturing the satellite antennas or the terminals. Yes. And this is the uh, flat panel terminal or flat panel antenna. Oh, that's the satellite terminal for Camera. Yeah. Yes, exactly. This is from Camera. And uh, this is uh, the, the, the uh, portable or um, uh, movable uh, uh, antenna, which can be installed over a vehicle. If you have a remote area where we require uh, the connectivity, great for down under, right? Great exactly. for Australia. Exactly. Uh, yeah. exactly. Exactly. And uh, we are going to have this installed uh, uh, maybe uh, tomorrow in with our partner booth, Hcom. Okay. Uh, so we have the 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 uh, vehicle relay where we're going to install this terminal on top of the vehicle and we're going to have the live demo. Okay. Wow. Uh, so these are the two terminals which are basically partnered together with OneWeb. OneWeb is going to certify these uh, terminals or antennas and then uh, these are basically manufactured by different manufacturers. The reason why we, we are suggesting OneWeb is, is because uh, OneWeb has the uh, service level agreements of 95%. It has the global coverage by end of this year and it has 650 satellites already deployed. Out of them, 588 are active. Okay. And it also provides the quality of service. For example, if you want prioritization on the network, and that is also possible. These are the main reasons why we are suggesting OneWeb. Okay. Okay, so we're talking with Inga about tactical operations, and in the meantime, <laughs> the Boston Dynamics uh, is, is moving around here. Yeah. It's one of the dogs. 
All right, that's interesting, right? But, but that's not yeah. about tactical. Oh, is it about tactical? Yes, as it well, is, right? It will be connected to the application, but later on. All right, yeah, okay. So for the next video. All right, okay, for <laughs> next, next video. Yeah. So this, so what, what we see here? What is what is this all uh, about? So it's uh, Agnet Tact Team. So Agnet Tact Team is an application to um, to manage tactical operation on the field uh, to allow people involved on the mission to collaborate, plan and share information uh, to have the same view at the same time. So you can see that uh, we have uh, several tactical views and we can, at the beginning, connect it to the uh, Google map or OpenStreetMap, if a GIS dynamic, uh, to allow people to have a, a first view of the actual situation. Okay. People can be connected and linked to the GPS and we can follow them uh, to be sure that we have the correct uh, view of the actual situation. So this is actually for the command and control to understand exactly what's going on on the ground uh, at a certain location in the situation. Yes, but not, not only because it's always it's uh, also with um, with smartphone yes. uh, to allow user on the field to to push some information from the field. So they can add some uh, picture video to be sure that uh, in a control room we have the correct view that what happening in the field. Okay, so both ways. Yes. To, so, so in order to make sure everybody understands what's going on yes. everywhere. Exactly. Yes. Because we can deploy this application in PC, tablet, or smartphone. So okay. it's something that can be used everywhere to have, as you said, the, the correct information. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm just following my guide, Naomi Reis, uh, who's leading me actually through all of these demos here at the Airbus booth um, to find the right people who are available. Uh, the later we are here at the booth, uh, the more difficult that gets. But, um, okay, well, in the meantime, you can see the speakers of Airbus who are speaking at Critical Communications World, and there are many slots. Good, so we're waiting on the next one, right, Jan? Um, yeah. One second. It's very busy. When I speak to EOP, we yes. talk about, actually, this is the most interesting topic about, well, we had a lot of interesting topics, but this is, this is catching my eye, actually. Because we talk about the future of critical communications, but we're already in the future right now, is it? Because there's so much going on when you look at the Airbus booth. So what do you then have to say about the future of critical communications? There must be something compelling, right? There is something compelling that what we have here is our Agnet broadband solution that is uh, sort of the future of communication, but also a collaboration and a, a collaboration platform for our, for our mission critical users. So what we're trying to show is with the, the help of our dispatchers and the mobile client users, we're able to enrich the end user with mission critical applications, okay. not just voice centric ones, but then mission critical uh, data and then video stream. So that means that you're seeing an ecosystem of all kinds of products here. TGI drones. Yeah. We have we have zebra devices over here. Yeah. Uh, this cross is uh, cross. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. French, right? Aina <laughs> uh, as well. Yeah. Um, so the the, the the so the thing is that you see a great ecosystem of all kinds of devices interconnecting with each other. Yeah. That that's probably the message, then, right? That is the message, and this is we would just like to pass a message saying that our existing users will have the capability to make decisions fast and quick based on the information they receive from the field using our mission critical applications.